show starts in three, two, one, go. Good morning, Kane Sport. It's August 12th, 2021. I'm Gary Furman, the publisher of Canesport.com, joined as always by our managing editor, Matt Shodell, as we review the news of the day. And uh, Matt, Hurricane's got some really big news with the commitment of safety, Markeith Williams. Some have him ranked a four-star, some have him ranked a three-star. There doesn't seem to be a universal opinion on that. But everybody I speak to about him tells me that the Miami Hurricanes just picked up a really good player. Your, your thoughts? Very athletic, very versatile, could grow into it. Some people think maybe a striker. Um, you know, he's the kind of athletic uh, playmaker that Manny Diaz loves on this defense, you know. And, um, and, you know, it was an interesting recruitment for him because it was sort of hot and cold at one point, which happens with some of these kids. And then Miami really realized they needed him, you know, in the class. And what's surprising is there's, there's now nine commits in the class, which is great. I don't think, you know, I, 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 from what I've heard, 15 to 17 is probably the target number. So they're in pretty good shape. I know fans were freaking out, like, in late June and, you know, even early July about the recruiting numbers. It's all looking like it's shaping up pretty darn well. And, um, you know, they're going for home runs, not – plan B guys this cycle. You know, there's no need to take plan B guys as we talked about previously. But of the nine guys, he's only a second one from Florida, which is super surprising. None from Dave Bauer to Palm Beach yet. Those guys are all waiting, uh, you know, at least, you know, the ones that there are a bunch of them that Miami is still on. And we'll see what happens with those guys. But uh, I really like the start that Miami's had. I like these nine commits they have. I think it's a really, really good class so far. Very solid. And I, I like, I like what the coaches are doing. I like the approach to this recruiting class, um, how they're, how they're going about things. And, uh, Really nice addition to the class. So at the pace that we're on, I guess what we're going to end up with, what, about 12 defensive backs in this class, I guess? <laughs> I, I, if you're not a defensive back, you don't, you don't, get, you don't commit anymore to Miami, right? Um, wow, T-Rob and DVD are, have just been on a tear in, in recruiting. And uh, eventually, I assume the other positions will, will catch up and get some commits. But uh, I, I think they're in pretty good shape in the defensive backfield. The, the scouting report that I got on Markeith is that he's a big physical kid. He's got loose hips. Um, he's agile enough to play corner, but he has the size and athleticism and he hits like a safety. Um, so uh, he started for three years in high school. This will be his third year coming up. He plays for Kennard Lang, former Kane. So uh, we'll call it a, a really solid commit for the Miami Hurricanes with Markeith Williams. We'll have further breakdowns on him in the coming days. Uh, we'll talk to Kennard and, um, and get his, his opinion and uh, bring it all to you at canesport.com. All right, we got a lot of other stuff on the website uh, this morning. Uh, I'll stick to recruiting. We've got a couple stories on 2023 kids. Uh, four-star offensive tackle, uh, Jonathan Hewley. Um, he really likes Garen Justice. Miami's got a good start going with him. And um, a 2023 linebacker by the, with a really cool name by the name of Whit Weeks. Uh, he's picked up a Miami offer and the Hurricanes have started recruiting him. So we've got stories on both those kids to get you acquainted uh, with them this morning. Um, now, we start a, uh, a new series today that I think you guys are going to like. We call it 15 Impactful Players in 15 Days. And we've identified the 15 guys that we think are going to be the most impactful players for the Hurricanes this year. And we're going to be analyzing them, profiling them, one, one a day for the next 15 days. So we start today with number 15, DeAndre Johnson, the defensive end transfer from Tennessee. And Matt, we've got it at number 15, but when you look at how important he is to the defensive end position based on what Miami's lost and what they have coming back, uh, I would say DeAndre really could rise higher than that. Your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, as you and I went through the uh, the top 15, trying to figure out who are, you know, who's number one is pretty easy, who's number two, three, four. You know, DeAndre Johnson, really, when you look at it, he could be, as, at the end of the season, we might re-rate everybody, and he might be as high as number three, four, or five on this list, you know, depending how things go. I mean, he's a double-digit sack potential guy, but at the same time, he might struggle against the run, you know, that's the concern with him, so... Uh, a lot of upside, and I think he was one that we sort of struggled with maybe where to put him. Maybe should he even be out, be outside the top 15 until he proves himself? You know, like, it's just, it, he was an interesting one to try and, and figure out where he might wind up. Um, but, you know, for now, I think 15 is about where he belongs. You know, the, the team's got a lot of talent, and, um, and he's a guy who still has to prove it. 
You know what? It, it, it's not an easy one to, to really wrap your hands around because, you know, you want to obviously be optimistic about it. And But, I mean, he did come here as a transfer. He was not what you would call an impact player at Tennessee. They probably were using him out of position. He was playing predominantly linebacker, sometimes rush the passer, but uh, probably better suited for defensive end, which he'll be playing at Miami. But the, the, the truth is he was not a high-impact player at Tennessee. So we're projecting him to be that here, but we don't know until the, the bullets start flying how impactful he's going to be. But uh, I feel comfortable that he'll be in the top 15 impactful players on the team. Uh, he will almost certainly be the best pass rusher on the team this year, and um, we'll, we'll see where he takes it from there. So uh, we introduced that series today. And then the other thing that we have on the website uh, this morning is the uh, the Kane Sport Inside the Lines feature. Uh, we we did we looked at the offense yesterday. Today we look at the defense. And um, Matt, uh, I, I think that you would agree with me that it's a lot harder, uh, really, to put your hands around where Miami stands on the defensive side of the ball and what they're going to look like this season than the offensive side of the ball, uh, which we did yesterday. Yeah, 100%. I'm pretty confident the secondary will be really good. Uh, not as confident in the defensive line and linebacker. They have a lot to prove outside of Gil Frierson and, and Nessa Silvera. So, um, yeah, I mean, we break it all down. You know, I'm not going to rehash everything we said in the video. <laughs> you guys can watch the video yourselves. But, yeah, I mean, a lot of question marks on D. The offense should be really uh, pretty spectacular, I think. All right, so um, you've got all that coming this morning. Uh, then uh, tonight, we'll be back at Green Tree Practice Field with another day of, of practice coverage, uh, video, interviews, and all that um, as the Hurricanes point towards this weekend when they will be having their first, um, their first scrimmage. And we're expecting that to end up taking place on Sunday. So for Matt Shodell, I'm Gary Furman. That'll do it today for Good Morning Canesport. We'll see you next time, everybody.